Hello and welcome to another episode of Ross on Cars. I'm Ross Furlong and this is a Porsche 996 C4S. Right, well, I'm very excited to have this C4S here today. I've never driven one, so thank you to Paragon Porsche for lending it to me. I do remember when these came out, though, in 2002. I saw one in a car park in Canary Wharf and just thought it was the most lovely looking car. Now, this is a Gen 2 turbo bodied vehicle, uh, but just to put the car into context, if you like, in the, the long line of 911s, this is the uh, 996, which came out in 1997 and was designed by a guy called Pinky Lai. Uh, it was very controversial in lots of ways. It was the first move into the water-cooled engines and also um, the design was shared, a lot of the design was shared with the Boxster that came out at the same time. So the front end of the Gen 1 996 looks pretty much identical to the Boxster of the period, but this allowed Porsche to get through that tricky financial period in the late 90s and, and come out the other side smiling. So this car come out in 2002 of course it's five years on it's the gen 2 they changed the headlights which were quite controversial on the gen 1 and so this had the turbo cars uh, headlights and a few other changes i think the three-quarter rear view of this car is probably the best of any 911 um, but uh, let's go and have a closer look so here we are the rear three-quarter view what a lovely view it is someone at porsche must have spent a lot of time back in 2002 getting this absolutely spot on I really like this red strip at the back, you didn't get that on the turbo. And also this S here, standing for super, which goes all the way back to 1966 in the first generation of the 911, uh, they used it on that. Obviously it's turbo bodied. Um, the turbo would have been 25,000 pounds more expensive back in 2002. This was a 63,000 pound car. So you can see why it was attractive from that point of view. Um, you could, if you'd wanted to, have got a slightly faster version of this in the C4 without the additional weight of the turbo body, the 65 kg extra weight, um, and saved yourself a bit of money. But nobody did that. Um, I think they only sold about 3,000 of the C4s and about 17,000 of these. So it goes to prove that Porsche's commercial idea about turbo body Carreras um, really, does, really does pay off. Something about the engine here is the M96 engine had been bored out to 3.6 for the Generation 2 cars. Uh, that was good for about 320 brake horsepower, 0 to 16 5.1, and a top speed of 174 miles an hour. A little known fact about this car the twisty wheels, the turbo wheels, on this car, the spokes were solid, not hollow as they were on the turbo version. Not many people know that. So here I am in the interior of the C4S. It's a seal grey C4S with very, very dark blue seats. And the first thing that you notice about the interior of this car is just how modern it is and how well laid out it is. You come out of a 964 or a 993 where switches are a bit randomly positioned and been added on, if you like, over the years. Here, it looks very well planned out. And you wonder whether Toyota, who were involved in the manufacturing process, um, were involved here in just the order and the layout. Cause it's very, very logical. Still very 911. It has your five dials at the front here, though they kind of overlap a bit now in this car. This is Gen 2, so they had a bigger digital display as well. So you can see digital starting to creep in and you get your, your mileage uh, in the computer screen there on the bottom half of the rev counter. Some other changes for Gen 2. They brought back the glove compartment. Hooray! So here it is here. If you like a glove compartment. Didn't have that in the Gen 1. They also installed a cup holder. Yeah, so in the Gen 1 you had this very strange arrangement where you had a, like a clip-on which you could put onto the side vent here. Uh, whereas in the Gen 2 here they've obviously realised that the cup holder is incredibly important part of a £63,000 car. So they put it in not just one, but two. Also in here that you can see that they brought in in Gen 2 the CD holder. On the Gen 1, they had the tape holder. Some of you watching this film probably won't even know what a tape was or is. But uh, yeah, so CD height of modernity in 2002. This has an upgraded stereo system in it. Um, the windows, the window switches are down here on the centre console, not on the door. You've got some switching up here for the sunroof. 
you can get into the boot and the engine bay with some buttons down here. Um, there's a big hazard warning button there, and that's a very good place for it to be actually. I always kind of find myself searching for those when you hit a bit of traffic suddenly. And the whole car had loads of airbags in it, so all around it felt a lot safer than the previous generations um, from a yeah, safety point of view. So I think uh, the best thing now is just to take this baby for a spin. Right now, so here I am in the C4S. Uh -huh. So what do I think? Uh, well, I'm used to driving 964 around, as you know, probably. Um, it does feel smoother. I wouldn't say quite say GT-like, but it's got more of those sorts of qualities to it. A little bit smoother, maybe, um, but still recognizably 911. It's got um, very, very punchy at sort of the lower gears. Rather like my 964, when you get into third gear above about three or 4,000 revs, it really, really, really pulls. I'm getting lots and lots of feedback from the road. It's really uh, given me a sense of um, what's going on beneath the tyres, which is very um, gratifying. <laughs> the throw on the uh, gear stick is quite quite long. Smooth, though, smooth. It doesn't feel quite as notchy as it can do on the 964. It feels like a more polished kind of box. Like it's up to six speed on this car, so it should move forward from where it was. Very, very good visibility all around. So I can see the front end of the car with the, these little um, arches. Give it a very nice feel. You know that you're driving a 911 when you can see those. And then out back is lots and lots of visibility and a really big rear view mirror. So you know where you are on the road at any, any point. I can't really overtake on the roads like this. Um, but it certainly gives you a feel for you know B roads, A roads, where this car really comes into its own. And I feel like you could really, really chuck this around. If I get a chance in a minute or two, I'll see what I can do. Uh, the trick with this car is to brake quite hard and get the weight going forward and then accelerate out of corners. Um, if you back off in the corners, then you might get into a little bit of trouble because these can get a little bit snappy uh, if you don't treat it like a 911. So let's just see if I can find somewhere where I can give it a bit of uh, give it a few beans and then we'll see what's what. Alright so let's give the car a few beans. Yeah you can really feel that like with all 911s really it has different levels to it so when you when you start driving them, they feel very smooth and very docile. You, know, you can drive them nice and slowly, smoothly through town, commute. But you know that as soon as you get into that sort of three or four thousand rev band, it turns into a real racer. You know, you can just uh, you can just see how you would drive this to a track day or drive it on a motorway or just go anywhere with it. Really, you take the kids to school. The secret of the 911 success, I suppose, is that it can kind of do it to it do everything. Um, this is a four-wheel drive as well, so you know it's uh, even good. In these country lanes in the winter, it can just pretty much do everything. You should also have got a Tiptronic version of this car. Uh, I'm not sure I would like that quite as much. This manual box is lovely, six-speed. Very nice to play with, second to third, fourth, you know, rewarding, <laughs> really very, very good. And you're going to scrub off the speed really quickly as you come into residential areas. The only thing you could do without on this car really is traffic in front of you. That's the only thing you could really do without. I think, consider this is £35,000, this car. Extraordinary amount of 911 for your money, really. And what you're getting is a very modern 911. That doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel like it's 20 years old. I mean, it really doesn't. You know, it feels like a modern car to me when I'm driving it. 
very comfortable and um, you know it, I mean 35k is the sort of top end really of the prices for this car on piston heads but you do have to be a little bit careful about buying these because it ha does have some very well documented engine issues early on uh, which by you know this age should have been sorted out by any decent kind of Porsche independent garage so it's not something that you necessarily need to be too worried about but you definitely need to look into um, you know the, these, these issues uh, before you buy and um, you know I think buying one like this done 65,000 miles with uh, proper service history and probably looked after by good independent Porsche dealers is going to be quite key for someone like me if I really want that assurance if I was going to buy a car like this I'd really want to know um, that it had been properly sorted out and looked after which obviously this one has I mean it just looks amazing amazing looking car I'm not trying to do a sales job on it by the way <laughs> I'm just I'm just commenting I mean it's um, you know value real value for money this car so I think what I'm going to do as usual is when I get a space in the traffic here I'm just going to go for a bit of a drive. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video of the C4S. If you did, press like down below. And also I've got some great cars coming up, hopefully some Italian Exotica. So subscribe if you'd like to see those. This car, by the way, from Paragon is currently for sale. So I'll leave some contact details at the end. Thanks for watching. I've been Ross on Cars.